Hey guys, on today's show, what the heck is the Q of an antenna? You have any idea what that is? We're going to find that out and much more right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Well, welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for and pass your exams as quickly as possible so you can become a licensed ham operator. As I said, today's topic is going to be about the queue or queue of antennas, and this is a big, not and that's not a big deal, but it's something you need to know about, and up until recently, I didn't really care, and I didn't really know what it was. So I've done a little research. I came to, I, I found a really good understanding about it. So I wanted to share what I found with you guys. And I kind of simplified it a little bit so it makes a little more sense. If you are studying for your technician or studying for your general, you're going to run into questions about Q. And all of the explanations that I found about it, at least from you know the resources that I had available at the time, they didn't really explain it in a way that made that clicked in my head. And I just got frustrated with it. I was like, you know what? Don't care. I, I, I memorized the question and answer. And when it came up on my test, or if it came up on my test, I was able to answer it without knowing what it was. Uh, but I wanted to kind of figure out an understanding of it here a little bit more. And it just hit me one night. I was actually lying in bed. And uh, I, I woke up around 4 in the morning. And all of a sudden, my brain started spinning. You know, Because that's the time you want to have ideas uh, instead of sleep. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to get up and just uh, research this and see what I can find out. So I did a little research on it. I found a couple different resources out there. And I kind of collected it all together to present, give my presentation here. Uh, first of all, I got a couple little announcements here before we get going. I want to uh, formally announce I have a new channel. Uh, many of you are familiar that I do a lot of cooking. I was a chef for a while. And I um, had shared some recipes last year during the holidays and i had some of those up on my website and other places i talked about it on some other people on other ham uh, youtuber live uh streams and stuff like that but i didn't want to m mix my cooking interests in with ham radio as i want to keep those separate and youtube probably appreciates that as well so i'd like to formally announce that the fear of cooking youtube channel is now open along with an accompanying website called nofearofcooking.com and the website has an amazon store that has all the different bits of stuff that i use in my kitchen all the recipes are there the channel of course has the videos we go through the fundamentals of your kitchen setup and then it goes into we're, we're getting into the recipes now that i've just got those other videos shot so please feel free to go over there and check it out. I appreciate the support. I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible so I can get that site to monetize quickly. And I want to bring you guys some excellent, excellent recipes. Hey, we all need to eat, right? I mean, I, I've never met a hand that doesn't like food. So, uh, you know, if you guys want to check that out, feel free. I'd really appreciate the support on that. And that'll, uh, that'll take care of that. Now, as far as this channel goes, if you do like this video here, please consider smashing that like button and subscribing if you have not subscribed yet. Click on the little bell and be notified of new, new videos. So those are the two main announcements I wanted to make here real quick. The new channel's uh, going well. It's a little bit freaky right now, trying to run two channels at once, making videos for ham radio and do another, you know, switching on to another uh, to do cooking. Uh, so it is what it is. So let's go, without further ado, to my desktop and start the presentation. So, the queue of antennas, the what, where, why, and how. And by the way, this is not the queue we're talking about. <laughs> you, uh, you Trekkies out there probably recognize that guy, John Delancey. Okay, so as far as the queue goes, the queue or quality factor is a value that describes the characteristics of an oscillating or resonating system. In radio, we're mostly interested in, this, in the electrical, electric circuits that do the oscillating. And an antenna circuit is one of, the, is one of particular interest as, as an oscillating circuits go. Uh, energized antennas are oscillators as well. Current does surge back and forth in radiating elements, and there is a natural resonant frequency for an antenna. You know, we've talked about tuning antennas before. You've seen some of my other videos where I bought my rig expert out and I'm tuning the antennas. You see how how it dips and this and that. So uh, when you trim an antenna's length, you're adjusting the resonant frequency by changing the distance that the current has to flow from end to end of the element and hence the time required for it to do so. So again, when we're tuning our antennas up, I've gone out there, you see me walk back and forth, snip a little bit, take another reading, snip more, take another reading. 
until I get it exactly where I want or get that SWR down where I want it. Uh, the time required for current to surge back and forth along the element's length can also be impacted by inserting components like coil inductors or capacitors. And look at it as a cheat code. Inserting a, the components make the antenna act like it's much longer than its true physical length. Uh, you'll hear terms such as loading coils and capacitance hats or loading antenna. This simply mean, uh, simply mean this technique has been used to fool the antenna into thinking that it's bigger than its height or its length indicates. So that's pretty pretty easy so far. Stay with me. This law makes sense. You'll have that aha moment shortly. Okay, so why is Q important? Well, bandwidth. The bandwidth of the tuned circuit reduces when the quality factor increases. As losses decrease, so, so the tuned circuit becomes sharper as energy is stored better in the circuit. So if you see the example here, on the left side, we have an example of high Q, and the right side is an example of low Q. So in high Q, pretend I've got a pendulum on a, on a, on a rope, and I'm swinging it just in the air. Well, that is a demonstration. We're basically demonstrating what's called damping. And with very little damping, the pendulum swings freely as the resistance of the air, uh, as well as minimal friction at the anchor point, only loses a fraction of the energy you supply. So when I push that, when I push that pendulum, it swings back and forth freely in the air, and there's really not much to stop it. It's kind of, you know, it, it'll slowly uh, lose its energy and then come to a stop. However, on the right side here, the example of a low Q antenna. We're doing the exact same experiment, and this time we're doing it, say, in water. So we have a pendulum. We're going to swing it in the water and let it run through. So we get very different results, but uh, if we do the same thing in water, the pendulum oscillator is now highly damped by the water resistance, and our pendulum loses in its imparted energy rapidly. Obviously, if you've ever seen anything, if you try to you know, run your hand through, a, through water, it's, it's a lot harder to go because you have much more resistance there. So that's basically what... I'm trying to get the, the point I'm trying to make here as far as how Q works. And I actually was going to set up a demonstration for you guys where I was actually going to have a pendulum swinging in the air. And I went out and bought an aquarium and I filled it up with water and I tried doing stuff. It just didn't work out. So the heck with it. I figured, you know, this is probably just as good. Use your imagination. You can figure it out. Okay, so the Q factor is defined as the ratio of the energy stored in the oscillator to the energy that must be imparted per cycle to keep the oscillator swinging consistently. That is, the energy of the initial lift and shove of the pendulum compared to the energy of just one of your regular reinforcing shoves to keep it swinging to the exact same height or amplitude each cycle. The energy you add with a shove each cycle is exactly the same as the energy lost to resistance each cycle. So Q has no uh, units. It has no ohms. There's no Henry's or amps or anything like that. It's just a simple number. And there's more than one way to calculate for Q for an antenna, but for the purposes of this, we're going to keep it real simple with this equation down here. Down here, In this equation, FC is the center frequency of, re of resonance for your antenna. So when you tune your antenna, where you got it, where you get the lowest SWR, when it's perfectly resonant where you want it, that's your, your center frequency of resonance. And then F1 and F2 are the frequencies above and below that center of frequency that the antenna will operate to achieve an acceptable SWR. So if you see how wide it is, this makes sense in just one second. Uh, when you see how wide it is or how narrow it is, that is your Q. So with that, let's go to the next part where you're about to have your aha moment. So a low Q antenna here, you'll see, has a much wider SWR bandwidth than, say, the high Q. So here we have an example. The, on the left side for low Q, the center uh, frequency is 14.150 megahertz on the 20-meter band. F1 is at 14.020, and, and F2 is 14.300. So you see we have a wide band of usage there, and we, you know, you, you're able to go up and down that band, and, you're, and your, your uh, resonance is going to stay relatively uh, similar. Whereas on the right side, in the high Q, you see that our, our center frequency is set at uh, 14.150, and our F1 is 14.145, and our F2 is 14.155. So now it's a very narrow band, or very, yeah, very narrow uh, frequency band on the bandwidth there. Examples of this of these would be, you know, if you're looking for examples of a high and low Q antennas, a high Q antenna would be like a dipole, infed half wave, stuff like that. Um, you know, a lot of infed half waves we built here that we've, you know, the, the uh, KM4ACK, uh, the K6ARK, and the one that I brought out recently, the Beast, uh, those are all considered, you know, wide band. And that depends upon, a lot of the times that'll depend upon what kind of capacitors you have into your antenna will widen the bandwidth of that. 
Uh, whereas on the opposite side, a higher Q antenna, you're looking more like more like hamstick antennas. I know the hamsticks for sure because they have a loading coil or not a loading, but they have a co they're coiled up to make them electrically longer than they actually are. And they, while they maintain, you know, very very nice portability, your Wolf River coils and buddy sticks, you know, other are other examples of uh, higher Q antennas. You can get them on to specific frequencies and tune them up to a frequency, but your bandwidth is going to be kind of narrow as opposed to some of the other ones out there. So that's pretty much that. And I hope that makes a little more sense now. So the, all the Q really is, is how wide or narrow the bandwidth is on a specific antenna. Okay, so let's, let's kind of wrap this up here. The pros and cons of high and low Q antennas. High Q antennas, the pros are shorter length and easy for mobile operation. Again, like the hamsticks, Wolf River coils, Tar Heel, you know, things like that. Uh, cons are you are resonant on a much narrower section of the band, which we just discussed. Uh, low Q antennas, the pros, efficient operation across a much broader bandwidth. And the cons, it's much larger and it's usually a longer antenna. You're not going to be, you know, you're not going to hook a DX Commander and, and put it on top of your car. So, I mean, some of you might, but the majority of us won't. Uh, so having something has a has a smaller footprint, but you sacrifice that for having a higher Q antenna. That's what that's the trade off. So that's pretty much it, guys. I didn't want to make this a really long video, and I really hope that it, it has helped to explain what Q is to you. Now, like I said, I still don't really care about Q. I like I, if I have an antenna and I build a, I build a decent antenna, and I see when I get it on my on my analyzer that I have a nice wide bandwidth of, of resonance. I'm happy with that. But, you know, it's kind of cool to finally learn yet another thing and know exactly what Q is and how to kind of determine, you know, how to identify it when you see it. So if you guys ever get antennas out there and you happen to throw it onto an analyzer and you're getting it tuned up and you see a sharp, uh, a sharp dip or, or, you know, narrower bandwidth, you know that's a high Q antenna as opposed to a lower Q antenna. Uh, which will have much wider bandwidth. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button down below. Give me a thumbs up. And don't remember, if you're new here or if you haven't done it yet, down below, subscriptions are free. Just click on the subscribe button, click on a little bell, and be notified when I do new videos. And until then, guys, this is Ham Raider for Non-Techies. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and we are clear.